Hello and welcome to NHP's webinar series. My name is Ron Pryor and I'm a technical training leader for NHP electrical engineering products. For today's webinar, we will be looking at maintenance requirements for electromechanical contactors, when and why it may be required. The objective for this webinar is to discuss the following points for an understanding of why maintenance needs to be considered with the operational factors affecting contactor life, the importance of initial design and installation to reduce maintenance requirements, the environmental factors which affect the life of switchgear, and monitoring and maintenance to reduce breakdowns and loss of production. A contactor, once installed, if it's installed in perfect operating conditions, will not have any issues during its operational life. Like many switchboard and switchgear installations, they are forgotten once in operation. As real life is not perfect, maintenance inspections can identify issues which may lead to failure, hence prevent unexpected breakdowns, which would lead to loss of production. So the importance of maintenance increases with the cost impact of any potential loss of production. We will look at the factors which can affect the requirements and timing of maintenance. The part of a contactor most often considered for maintenance is the main contacts. Wear of contacts occurs as small amounts of the contact material are vaporized as arcing occurs during closing and opening of contacts under load. The amount of arcing which occurs is dependent on the type of load being switched. AC1 duty being resistive loads has minimal arcing, whereas switching duty of AC4, which is opening of an inductive load at a higher than rated current is more arduous. Providing in contact to selection, the utilization category rating is selected for the load characteristics. For example, a motor, the AC3 rating is used. The electrical endurance curves provide the number of switching cycles expected before the contact sets are worn out. However, if the contactor is subjected to making onto short circuits, significant life reduction will occur. So if short circuit events occur, scheduling of maintenance inspections should be undertaken to verify remaining life expectancy. With larger frame contactors, it is possible to make inspection of the contact sets and then to ascertain the stage of life based on thickness of the contact pads relative to new condition. The contact pads being silver-based materials, take a number of operations before they sit together for best electrical contact, and with ongoing switching operations, will wear with matching contours. Where contacts are inspected, blackening around the contacts is normal, with oxide sooting from arcing. With end of life, the contact carrier material becomes partially visible as the silver-based contacts has all been eroded. As the mechanical life of a contactor is more than the contact's electrical life, it is common for them to be replaced to extend the life of the contactor. Noting that all fixed and moving contacts of a contactor should be replaced at the same time. When contact sets are replaced, the arc shields should also be considered for replacement as a buildup of oxidized contact material can maintain the arc rather than splitting the arc and extinguishing it. Whilst smaller frame sizes of contactors are not suited for contact inspection or replacement of the contact sets, as their compact construction arrangement does not allow for access. For these sizes, there is a reliance on understanding how many times a contactor operates a day or year to give an indication of when the contacts would be at the end of life and the contact replaced. As contact resistance increases 
when contact material is depleted, where it can be safely undertaken, measurement of the voltage drop across each pole at rated current can be used to calculate a watts loss value for a comparison against watt loss data. Whilst not an absolute, it is a guide for consideration in determining if contact sets are at end of life. The second component of a contactor, which can be a common cause of failure, is the coil system. Whilst it is not necessarily a physical maintenance item, it is an area where preventative maintenance and correct operational environment will reduce coil system failure. A contactor with the typical wound wire coil is subject to damage from under voltage or over voltages of the coil's control voltage. With low voltage, there may be insufficient power to close the contactor or to maintain full magnet closing force, hence additional current flows, which causes increased heating of the coil windings, which causes breakdown of the winding insulation or deformation of the core former, which can create mechanical jamming, which ultimately results in short circuiting of turns. When doing maintenance inspection of the coil, the warning signs to look for are discoloration of the coil taping and deformation of the plastics. When the circuit to a coil is opened, the inductive energy from the coil's collapsing magnetic field dissipates as a voltage spike, as shown here for a 24 volt coil. Voltage peaks of up to 4 kV can occur with higher control voltages. The addition of suppression devices across the coil, whether it is an RC network, MOVs or diodes, they will protect devices in the control circuit from premature wear of relay contacts which switch the coil and potential damage to electronic devices in the control circuit. With the advent of electronic controlled coil systems in modern contactors, a number of these conditions may be reduced or eliminated. An electronic coil system still utilizes a typical wound wire coil, but with electronic circuitry using a DC output to control the current profile of the wound coil during closing, operation and opening functions. The electronics provide definite closing voltage and opening voltage levels to ensure the full magnetic closing force is achieved without overcurrents which cause coils to overheat. Integrated into the electronics are suppression components to mitigate the voltage spikes from coil openings, so control devices are protected. A periodic inspection of contactors and other switch gear within their enclosure can be used for preventative maintenance. Visually checking for signs of overheating, environmental issues or mechanical damage can allow for rectification of an issue prior to becoming a fault, which would lead to loss of production. With contactors designed for operation in 60 degree ambient temperature and terminal temperatures up to 105 degrees C, heat issues are generally from other factors which may lead to early failure of a contactor. Visual inspections look for browning or deformation of plastics or cable insulation, which may be the result of incorrect cable sizing, poor cable preparation and crimping, or incorrect tensioning of connections. But it can sometimes be an indication of end of contact life causing high contact resistance. Thermal imaging can be utilized as a preventative maintenance assistance to look at heat formation of switchgear for identifying issues prior to them being seen in visual inspections. However, these images must be interpreted correctly to identify critical hotspots 
or inconsistency as internal faults present as heated surface temperature, which are inconsistent with other areas of the contactor. Periodic measurements and comparisons of results to previous images can show any trends and determine whether changes are due to variation in the load current, the device or connections. A key factor is the importance of an enclosure with an IP rating suited to the environment, including any cooling or anti-condensation heating requirements. Ingress of dust and debris can affect various areas, mechanical jamming or between the pole faces of the magnetic cores, which is recognised by humming or buzzing. This causes overheating of the coil and the main contacts from poor conduction. Should the dust be conductive or non-conductive but with moisture, this can lead to tracking between phases and ultimately arcing and short circuiting. In corrosive atmospheres from the likes of wastewater treatment can cause oxide buildups, which result in poor connections, high contact resistances and weakening of springs. This can also affect any auxiliary contacts and can be a major issue, especially for feedback and interlocking signals, which may cause process or safety failures of equipment. So in review, with correct selection, installation in the correct environment, and maintenance checks to ensure the maximum life from a contactor and prevent early failures, thus avoiding interruptions or breakdowns, a contactor can have a long and happy life. This concludes the webinar. Thank you for joining. I trust you found it beneficial and helpful in your understanding of maintenance considerations for electromechanical contactors.